Welcome home to Underserved Favor Ministry. We are making Jesus, God's love and grace, known to the world. A blessed day, Church. Welcome to our online Sunday service. And as we gather today, let's embrace and be reminded of our Abba Father's goodness and unfailing love. Amen. So, to get us started, why don't we prepare our hearts to worship with a prayer? Let us pray. Our most gracious and loving Father, thank you for this beautiful day that you have given to us to gather online and celebrate your love and grace towards us. We are grateful for the lives of our online volunteers who facilitate the service today and for our pastors whom you use as your mouthpiece so we can get to know you more in our lives. Thank you, Jesus, for the revelation that we will receive today from your word. May we apply it in our lives so we can continue to grow and glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Church, let us get ready to praise and worship. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise. In this heart of mine, God is good and all the time. Through the darkest nights, His light will shine. God is good. God is good. God is good all the time He put a song of praise in His heart of mine God is good all the time Through the darkest nights His light will shine God is good, God is good all the time If you're walking through the valley, there are shadows all around, but do not fear, He will guide you, He will keep you safe and sound, for He has promised to never leave you, nor forsake you, and His word is true, God is good all the time. His Holy Spirit, now we can stand and testify that His love is everlasting and His mercy, they will never end. God is good all the time, He put a song of praise in His heart of mine. God is good all the time, through the darkest nights, His light shine. God is good. God is good all the time. Though I may not understand all the plans you have for me, my life is in your hands. And through the eyes of faith, I can clearly see God is good all the time. Put a song of praise in this heart of mine. 
We have now come to an important part in our gathering, the communion. Please make sure that your communion elements are ready. Before we partake, let us be reminded that before Jesus was betrayed, He gathered all of His disciples in an upper room, where He took the bread, broke it, gave thanks, and gave to His disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which shall be broken for you. Do this as often to remember me. After supper, he took the cup and again gave thanks, gave to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this as often to remember me. So the bread you are holding right now represents Jesus' body, which was broken for our healing. And the cup represents Jesus' blood, which He willingly shed for the forgiveness of all our sins. So together, let us raise the bread and declare, Lord Jesus, You are my Savior. Your broken body made me whole. By Your stripes, I am healed. From the top of my head to the soles of my feet, I receive this Jesus. Thank you for loving me. Amen. You, you may now partake. Let us raise the cup and declare. Lord Jesus, you are my Savior. Your blood was shed for the forgiveness of all my sins, past, present, and future, so that today we live a life full of favor and righteousness. I receive this Jesus. Thank you. I love you too. Amen. You may now partake. So we have just partaken of the communion. God bless you always. Yes, Jesus. We declare our victory today, Lord. Because you are our champion. You have won the victory for us. Our confidence is found in you.
the heaven of Texas. Come on, church, let's declare. When I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down. I have the authority. Jesus has given me. That it is by your name that we live by. It is by your name that we receive our victory. Thank you, Jesus, that you are our champion. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We know that after the worship, you are even more excited to give your tithes and offering. But church, Please be reminded that giving is not about waiting for a special revelation. It is an act of faith in Jesus' finished work. And so it is a privilege and an expression of our faith in His faithfulness into our lives. So if you are giving your tithes to online fan transfer, please indicate your name in the remarks field so that our pastors can personally pray for you. And so with this, we invite you to raise your hand, your mobile gadget, or your tithe envelope for a prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and loving Father, you are indeed faithful into our lives. You are an abundant God, and out of your abounding grace, you have given us everything. We have seen you multiply little to many, turn water into wine. We have seen you move our mountains. And we are confident that as we give our tithes today, you will do it again. You will exceed and extend and multiply its reach. We thank you for blessing us that we may be a blessing to others as well, just as Jesus is our ultimate blessing. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus, for the wonderful praise and worship experience. And thank you, Jesus, as well, for the privilege to be reminded of His finished work through our communion. And for the overflowing blessings He has given us that allows us to give through tithes and offering. And church, just like me, I know you are also excited to hear our word today, right? But before that, we are inviting you to join us in our online communities. We are now in Telegram, so if you're new here or you don't have Telegram yet, please download it and search UFM Community in Telegram's public channel. 
Or you may also scan the QR code now flash in your screen. All you need to do is subscribe to it. Also, continue supporting our online platforms by sharing our content from both Facebook and YouTube. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell so that you will be notified when our videos are uploaded already. See in our online platforms and catch the word daily and get exclusive links to our videos. Church, our testimony today comes from one of our ministry heads sharing a remarkable experience of God's provision in a time of financial need. She shared this during a leadership meeting where she and her fellow leaders shared about how God provides in amazing and expected ways. She shares, Before I was deeply immersed in grace, even before I became a volunteer in VFM, I found myself in a challenging situation with only 100 pesos left in my pocket. I was uncertain as I counted the days until my next salary. Little did I know, God has already set things up to answer my prayer. Reflecting on Matthew 7 verse 7, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. I was reminded of God's unwavering love for us, His children. In every circumstance, we can trust that He is with us. We can boldly approach Him with our needs, knowing that He hears and answers our prayers in His perfect timing. One day, while commuting to the office with a colleague, we prayed that God will provide. We even dared to hope that the salary would be released early even if we knew the fixed and exact date of payroll. To our amazement, just minutes later, as we checked our online bank accounts, our salaries have been credited. Amazing timing. God is never too early nor too late. It was a tangible manifestation of God's faithfulness and provision. Later on, as I grew in my revelation of God's goodness, I am able to tithe and offer. I simply look back to the day and thank God how far He has brought me and my understanding. He has multiplied little to many. I am blessed to be the ministry head of tithes and offering and then now be the ministry head of communion. I no longer wonder when God will provide. Rather, I thank Him that He has already provided and I am able to tell others about this good news as well. Thank you, Jesus. Beloved, may this testimony serve as a reminder that God's provision does not stop at providing for you at your moment's need. He has already provided for every area, and when you receive a deeper revelation of His provision, when the need arises, you already thank Him that the need is already provided and even exceedingly and abundantly than you can expect. Amen? So, beloved, why don't we declare who we are in Christ? I am in Christ my Savior. I am righteous because of Christ. I am greatly blessed. I am highly favored. I am deeply loved. I am a winner. I am blessed to be a blessing. Lord Jesus, I trust Amen and Amen. Church, that's who you are and more of who you are in Christ coming up. So let's go and enjoy the word. Welcome home, beloveds. Thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity to minister to you at your homes or wherever you may be at right now. You know, as I was preparing for this message, uh, we asked our daughters this question. Do you really believe that your Papa God will give you your desires or give you what you want? And so the question and answer portion started with our youngest and up to the, the, the eldest. And so the youngest said, yes. And he followed through. Why? Why do you think Papa God will give you? And she said, actually, she thought for a while and said, because he's like a father. And as we went to our second child, before we reiterated the question, without second thoughts, you said, yes, and followed through with, why not? And when we went to our eldest daughter, uh, she was a bit more elaborate. She said, yes, because Papa God has given Jesus. If he has given Jesus, um, how else will he not give others? And 
And yet, it depends on our purpose. Because if you tell Papa God, I want to bomb a city, will Papa God give you a bomb to bomb the city? I was so ministered as I was listening to their answers. And, you know, it, it really helps remind us how it is to have a childlike heart. And today, as we understand, if God will really give the desires of our heart, uh, our desires, what we want, may we have a Paideon attitude, may we have a childlike heart to be expectant with the revelation that we will receive today. Let me start with a story, the story of King David. This is an overview of a life of desire and taking delight in God. So King David was known to be a man after God's own heart and God himself called David. He is a man after my own heart. David is a man after my own heart. And you know why? It's because what God wanted David wanted what God desired, David desired. It was God's desire to bring back all his people to Israel with Jerusalem as the heart of worship center and to make Jesus, his finished work, the center of worship. David wanted to bring back the lost tribes, the tribes that were scattered because down through the history, if you remember, Israel was scattered. And with King Saul before David, uh, he caused the scattering as well. So he wanted to bring back all the tribes and he wanted to build God a temple in the center of Jerusalem and bring back the Ark of the Covenant inside the temple, inside the Holy of Holies. The Ark of the Covenant, as we will discuss that more later uh, in another uh, preaching, it is a symbol, a foreshadowing of Jesus' finished work. So do you see how David is the reason why he's called a man after God's own heart? Now, David, like us, is very much human. He's not Jesus. He's just a symbol of Jesus. He has Christ-like characters, but he's not Jesus. He's not God. So he's bound to fail. And you know the times when he fails? It's the times when he will pursue his desires outside of God's instructions or outside of God's flow. Yun bang pinupursu niya yung mga gusto niya na hindi niya pinapaalam sa Panginoon or he doesn't pray about it and he just pursigido lang siyang gawin. And there were many instances and one of them is when he desired Bathsheba. Bathsheba was the wife of one of his generals. Uh, so one day, you know, see, King David, God has given David the means he has provided David to conquer the nations kasi nga, we need, they need to bring back the tribes to Israel. And so he had to conquer nations, their enemies, and go into military campaigns. In this very instance, this very military campaign, King David stayed behind. Hinayaan niya yung mga generals niya to go forth and do the military campaign. So he stayed behind in that cool evening. He was walking on his rooftop and he saw Bathsheba taking a bath. And he desired Bathsheba. Now, in order to get Bathsheba, because he desired her so much, he schemed to get her husband killed. His very own general, the husband of Bathsheba, killed in one of the military campaigns. And so indeed, that's what happened. Bathsheba's husband died in the campaign. And he was able to bring Bathsheba in as his wife and thereby one of his queens. And God, having known this, sent his prophet, sent his word through his prophet. And this is, take really pay attention to what God said through his prophet. Because here we will find God's intimate love and heart for all of us. This is what the prophet said to David. This is God's message to David. I have given you your master's house, your master's riches, your master's wives. Uh, this master, God is pertaining to King Saul, who was the king before David. I have given you everything. If that were too little, I would have given you more. Beloved, take note of this statement. If that were too little, I would have given you more. Who, who says that? 
you only hear that in a very intimate relation be- relationship between a husband and wife or a father and child. Uh, the, the the father or the husband would say, yun lang ba? Yun lang bang gusto mo? But hindi mo ko sinabihan. You should have told me. I would have given you everything. And God has the right to say that because he gave everything of heaven, Jesus Christ himself. And so that's what God told David. And so we see a picture of a man here who, when he pursues his own desires, fails and gets destroyed. So let's put a pin down on that. Yun, isipin natin yan as we do this discovery about desire. Because first, we're going to learn what do we do we really understand what desire means? What does the Bible say about desire? And we're going to look at verses in connection to that that will answer the question, will God give my desires? And of course, with the example of David, let's also look at what is God's desire? so that we may find ourselves aligned in God's desire. But it's going to start first with our understanding of this word desire. We'll find in one passage that uh, in this instance, there are two words used for desire used in this very passage. And we're going to find that in James 4, 1 to 3. What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this? that your passions are at war within you. You desire and do not have. So you murder, you covet and cannot obtain. So you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your own passions. Beloved James, uh, and we believe the writer is James, Jesus' brother, beautifully encapsulates David's own experience. When you pursue your passions outside of God's, outside of your request from God. And here in this very passage, we will find two words that are interchangeably used for the word desire. And these are the Greek words, epithemeo and aiteo. So where do we find that? That will be in James 4 verse 2, you epithemeo or desire and do not have so you murder you covet and cannot obtain so you fight and quarrel you do not have because you do not aiteo or ask now the spelling is different and that is of course they have different roots and they essentially mean differently while they are interchangeably used for desire so what do they mean We'll find that in both Strong's Concordance and the Abarim publication as a reference, epithemeo is a composite word coming from epi, which is a preposition, and thymeo to desire and longing. So that means epi, it's where you put your thymeo, right? So one of that is to set one's heart upon. So upon is the epi. And uh, the thymeo is where you put your heart. So epithymeo is where you put your desire on. Where do you put your longing on? That's epithymeo. Aiteo is a request that is founded on higher authority, a law or common sense. Essentially, it's a weaker person asking a stronger person. So now do you see the difference? Take note that epithymeo recognizes that Your source is your source of desire. Your ultimate focus is your desire itself. And you do not have anything else in focus but you and your desire. Aiteo, on the other hand, acknowledges that you cannot pursue your own desire without a higher authority or somebody stronger than you. You acknowledge that you are not the source Your desire is not even the source, but there is a higher source. And so that's the difference. And do you know, Jesus frequently uses the word aiteo. And we'll find examples such as John 14, 13 to 14. Jesus says, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Also in Matthew 7, 7, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Also in Luke eleven thirteen, If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? 
Jesus is using the Greek word aiteo, recognizing that our desires cannot be without request or acknowledging that there is a source. And we can only get our desire through asking that source or through that source. And I believe I've already given you a sneak peek. And Jesus has plainly said it that just ask. So if our question is, will God give my desires? Have you asked? How have you asked? <laughs> now going back to our eldest daughter's uh, answer. If you ask for a bomb, will Papa God give you a bomb? Beloved, right now I ask you uh, to answer this question, deep dive into the word further and look, look at how God has given the best of heaven through Christ Jesus and Everything in him is yes and amen. He has given Jesus, uh, he has given the best of heaven. So how will he withhold everything else through him? So beloved, yes, the answer is yes. God will give you the desire of your heart. But should that be the focus? King David himself, uh, he has written a lot of Psalms. And learning from that Men, the many lessons where he failed and he was destroyed by pursuing his own desires has written to help us focus our desires, has written a psalm to help us. And you will find that in Psalm 37, 4. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Beloved, this word desire in the Septuagint is aitema, where it comes from the word aitema. Tail. So you might wonder, this is an Old Testament writing. How, how come it's in the Greek writing? Well, the Septuagint is a Greek translation of the Old Testament. So if you want to uh, geek out on that, gusto mong mag-research, check out the Septuagint. So we are now connecting the use of the word aiteo, acknowledging that your desire should, it, it, it acknowledges that in and of yourself, cannot pursue your desire rightly. So let's deep dive further. Let's let's take time to chew, to delight. I'm already using the word delight now. Let's take time to enjoy Psalm 37.4. I'll give you a picture. A picture of a father and a child. A father comes home from work and a paideon, a child, a toddler, runs to the door and says, Papa, you're home. Gives the Papa a big hug and cuddles his father and just gives his Papa a warm embrace. Papa, I miss you so much. Thank you, Jesus. You're home. And his father will look at the, the child and says, how are you, my child? Are you, are you hungry? What do you want? And the child will say, did you bring something for me? And the papa will say, the father will say, no, but we can order from Grab or from Panda Food. And then he sets the child and then he will order. And the child will say, whoa, thank you, papa. You're the best. Thank you that you love me so, so much. Take a hold of that image in your head. Because this is what Psalm 37, 4 is telling us. As I was studying this, I asked God, Lord, what does it mean to delight? Because if it, if you're trying to say worship, uh, worship the Lord with all your heart, it would have said worship. In the Greek, in the Septuagint, in the, in the Hebrew writing, it doesn't say worship. It's very clear. It's the word delight. And this word delight simply means to take pleasure. Like for me, I take pleasure in chocolate ice cream, lalo na pag mainit. So alam mo yung when you delight in something, you savor, oh my gosh, my favorite flavor. That's what taking delight is. And yet, you know how God has breathed, breathed his life into the scriptures? There are still amazing discoveries that you can find in the word delight. It doesn't stop there. Another layer to this word delight is its feminine voice. The word delight takes a feminine voice. And this feminine voice gives us a picture when we hear the word delight. We see a woman and not just any woman because delight also means delicate. We're taking a picture of a delicate woman. And delicate means somebody who is utterly dependent to her husband or to somebody she has an intimate relationship. Um, yes, essentially the husband. And like a child, 
a very delicate child who is utterly dependent to his or her father. That's delight. When that child ran to the father and hugged the father, that was delight in its purest form. That's what this means. And let's go further down because it says here that when you take delight in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. This word give is the Hebrew word Nathan. This is where Nathan, the name Nathan comes from. Now, the name Nathan is a palindrome. And Nathan in Hebrew is a palindrome. It, it, uh, if you spell it out, it's, it reads Nathan and Nathan backward and forward, right? And the wisdom of God given to the scribes tells us that Nathan essentially means when God gives, he receives back. What does that mean? When God gives the desires of our heart and we take pleasure and we're happy when we give, when we get our desires, he is pleased. Going back to the picture, when the father sees the child, Papa, thank you. You're so, you're the best. Thank you, Papa, that you love me. When the father hears that child taking pleasure, na hindi pa nga nabibili, the father is pleased. This is the father's heart, beloved. So, to answer the question, yes, yes, David himself writes that your desire should not be the focus because your father knows this. And we, we can read even in the New Testament, your heavenly father knows what you need. So don't worry about it. He will give you what you want, what you need. Your focus should be to delight in him because you can rest assured that he will give you the desires of your heart. Now, this Psalm 37, 4 sounds very familiar in a New Testament scripture. If you look at Matthew 6, 33, it says, or Jesus says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you, beloved. Take delight in knowing God, his kingdom, his righteousness that is through Christ Jesus and everything that you want shall be added unto you. And Allow me to circle back to what my daughter said. Why does not why doesn't Papa God give us a bomb when we say I want to bomb a city because I'm angry at somebody? Why? Because he doesn't want us to be destroyed. Jeremiah, God says through Jeremiah, I for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And his promise is not for you while he works through us individually he works for us uniquely but he doesn't discount that he has children all around the world who also has different desires so what god does is to align everything so that each and every desire of desire of his children comes to alignment in his desire and all our desires are answered Take a hold of that thought, beloved, because we're going to understand first, what is God's desire? We do know that for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That, that's, that's God's desire. And we'll find that reinforced in 1 Timothy 2. Verses 1 to 4, first of all, then I urge you that entreaties and prayers, petitions and thanksgivings be made on behalf of all men, for kings and all who are in authority, so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires or will all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And the truth is Christ Jesus. What Timothy is saying here, um, coming from the teachings of Paul, no? Timothy is a disciple of Christ Jesus who learned from Paul, the, the disciple or the apostle of grace himself, telling us, pray, pray for everyone. Pray for your authorities, for your leaders. Pray for them because when you do that, this aligns with God's desire, God's desire, and God's desire is that everyone will be saved and will have knowledge of Christ Jesus. Beloved, it is God's desire coming full circle 
to the story of David. It is God's desire to bring his people back, to bring his people back with Jesus at the center. Jesus is the one who holds us all together. And so David was a man after God's heart because he understood this. He had a revelation of it and he acted out of it. And when he acted out of it, he aligned with God's desire and his desires were fulfilled because God provided along that way, along his desires. And yet we have to remember and David learned it the hard way, no? Na when you pursue your desires outside of God's flow, outside of God's timing, we will ultimately destroy ourselves or fail ultimately. Kaya our eldest daughter's statement really rings true. Why would you want to bomb a neighbor or the city when God wants to save that city? So that doesn't align. And yet you find that God will address what's in your heart in terms of that desire. Why do you want to bomb the city? And God is going to work through you uniquely and individually. And yes, uh, my our youngest daughter says, yes, she believes because God is our father. And our our middle child says, yes, why not? Yeah, why not? God has given us the best of heaven, Christ Jesus. How else, how else will he withhold everything through Christ Jesus? He can give everything through Christ Jesus. And so now we've seen God's heart, God's desire. Now, beloved, a very quick testimony about God's desire is what we're doing here in Undeserved Favor Ministry. For me personally, uh, when I was young, I wanted to be an artista. I wanted to be in theater. I wanted to be like Leia Salonga. And so I applied for a scholarship in UP, and I actually got a scholarship for UP Baguio in theater arts. However, it was not my mother's desire <laughs> to see me apart from her. No, She cannot imagine me to be away from her. And so I wasn't able to pursue that scholarship. And yet through in the course of my life, I wanted to be a newscaster. I wanted to be on TV. And so that's how I, I came upon uh, ABS-CBN. I worked in ABS-CBN. I became an MC, a host. So all of these were my desires. And yet I pursued it on my own. I pursued these desires on my own. And so, yes, I failed. I was destroyed by the fame that it came with because I, I it wasn't God's timing yet. And beloved, here I am today, not just hosting any pageant. This is not the Miss Universe pageant, but this is so much more. This is so much more important. Uh, I'm not just delivering the news at 8 o'clock or 7 p.m. I'm delivering the good news of grace. And see, it's to do this, it's not easy. It's the same discipline that is required if I were to be an artista on TV or a newscaster. And yet, you know, because... I'm aligning now myself together with the other volunteers, together with Pastor Ron, Pastor Michael. We're aligning that it is God's vision to make God's love and grace and Christ Jesus known to the world. And as I align myself, as we all, your volunteers, Christ's volunteers align, are all our desires come to life or come to fruition or they become realized how amazing is that that i'm doing so much more than i could ever desire i'm on youtube and you're watching this and i don't need to act i'm just living the life and i'm bringing to you the good news straight from its very source isn't that amazing beloved yes god will give your desires and because God loves you so much, God loves the world so much, He wants to put Jesus at the center, His finished work at the center of your life, at the center of everyone's life, so that we can align accordingly. And so when we find ourselves aligned to it, we'll find everyone's desire, yours, mine, and the others, coming to life, coming to fruition, without anybody getting hurt. And God's Word comes to life and so beloved rest assured that whatever you are desiring may it be a boyfriend or a girlfriend god will work for you uniquely and individually seek him delight in him 
enjoy the moment by moment as you close your eye, close your eyes right sorry close your eyes as you're working as you're working use that as a moment to delight in your abba father oh papa god thank you that i have a laptop thank you that i have a work thank you papa god that if you're a student thank you papa god that i'm studying in this school i have awesome teachers and even if my teacher is angry sometimes i have a good teacher i have awesome classmates you know just take delight in your abba father wherever you may be and see that he will see to giving the desires of your heart as he will for his other children so if you would like to this opportunity to take delight in your abba father and see the desires of your heart coming to life you can do that by receiving jesus as your personal lord and savior and we're going to join you by praying the prayer of faith let us pray lord jesus you are my savior you suffered and died for me your wounds were for my healing your blood washed away all my sins you died but now alive in victory now i can live your life of victory thank you jesus for loving me amen and amen beloved if you have just prayed that prayer we believe that you have just received jesus as your personal lord and savior you can now enjoy a delightful life in your abba father's embrace you are now restored to his original purpose where you can enjoy his fatherly love with you as a beloved child we would like to hear if you have received jesus today send us a message on our facebook page and with that we have the whole week to lo- to delight in our abba father to wait on his timing and to rest assured that the desires of our heart they will they will come to fruition they they will come in god's perfect time in his heavenly timeline and with this let us all close to the prayer let us pray almighty and loving father thank you father for giving us jesus for through his finished work it everything is yes and amen everything that aligns to your desire to make jesus known to bring your people back to you father so that they may enjoy a life that is so loved by you father we just want to thank you that we have this privilege and opportunity to share this good news father even through our own personal testimonies and the lives of our volunteers father and may you bless continually as you have promised abraham each and everyone who are listening in the imparting or the sharing of this word father may you continue to glorify yourself in their lives as they continue to benefit in jesus finished work we just lift up everyone to you with thanksgiving and praise in jesus name Amen and amen. Beloveds, enjoy and take delight in the Father's love. Until then, God bless you always.